Chinese year of the monkey starts on Monday the 8th of February and the country goes on holiday for much of the week, so its financial markets will be closed too. That, at least, is one less thing for investors to think about in the coming week, even if I would politely suggest Chinese stock market volatility is a symptom of the globe's problems today, not its cause. Issues such as too much debt, too little growth, ebbing faith in central banks and over-optimistic earnings expectations. They're the real stories. However, <clears throat> I digress. Even without Chinese share prices moving up and down like a fiddler's elbow, there's going to be plenty to think about next week. And in this edition of our weekly markets review, Breaking the Mold, I'm going to look at the events which could cause a real fuss. Now, I think the coming days are all going to be about chips, cigarettes and ore, because we have, in order, full year results from silicon chip architecture designer Arm on February the 10th, a trading statement from Imperial Tobacco on the 11th, and full year figures from mining giant Rio Tinto, also on the 11th. So let's get cracking with Arm, whose share prices wobbled a little bit of late, hampered by wider volatility, concerns over the actual smartphone market after Apple's mixed outlook statement in January, and worries over other semiconductor end markets like PCs, servers, and even autos. Note how ARM stock has generally followed the chip industry benchmark, the American Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, or SOX. Now, ARM's boss Simon Seegers will no doubt be looking to offer some reassurance on the 10th, and these are the numbers to watch for. For full year 2015, the analyst consensus is for sales of around £965 million, pre-tax profits of just over £500 million, and an increase in the dividend to 8.3 pence. For 2016, and the guidance is probably going to be more important than the historic numbers, analysts are looking for sales of £1.1 billion, pre-tax profits of £575 million, and an increase in the divvy again to just north of 10 pence. Despite those divvy hikes, the yield's still only around 1%, and the real issue for investors here is do they want to pay 33 times earnings for the stock, weighing up near-term uncertainty against what looks to be a pretty strong long-term market position. Arm is building an enviable record of dividend increases, even if it isn't really a yield stock, but one firm that has done income hunters proud in the past is Imperial Tobacco. The FTSE 100 constituents due to release a first quarter trading statement on the 11th, with its shares near fresh all-time highs around the 38 quid mark, as this chart shows. Now, there are three numbers to look for in the statement. Growth brand volumes, total tobacco volumes, total sales. Now, also watch for any commentary on the US acquisition, the ongoing cost-cutting program, and the UK's plans for plain packaging. The first two underpin dividend growth forecasts, the last one could jeopardise them. Analysts are looking for around a 10% hike in Imperial's shelter distribution to 155p for the full year. That's a figure covered 1.5 times by earnings, and enough for around a 4% yield right now. Now, a headline dividend number will also dominate at Rio Tinto on the same day as Imperial reports, the 11th. But in this case, the key issue is whether boss Sam Walsh will cut the $2.15 total payment expected or not, either for the year that's just ended or indeed for the year that's just begun. The consensus is the same. The share price slump shown by the chart suggests the market does fear a cut, as the implied 8.4% yield is barely covered by earnings based on 2016 forecasts, and sliding commodity prices could even pressure the current forecasts anyway. Walsh might stick to his guns, cut capital investment, sell assets to fund the payment, or seek to release himself from the burden and free up capital from the, for the company's core operations. Let's see what he does, but here's Rio's dividend history since 2005 in dollars, and as you can see, it has cut before, albeit during the tempestuous year of 2009. Walsh's moves will help set the tone for the downtrodden mining sector overall, especially as PABHP Billiton is currently offering a double-digit yield right now, with earnings cover of only 0.5 times for 2016, according to the consensus. BHP publishes full-year figures on the 23rd. There's lots more I could talk about. Rolls-Royce's figures are out on the 12th, and Boss Warren East is likely to confirm a dividend cut here as well. But I'd better stop now before I go on too long. So thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.